Hello fun people, today we're breaking down the origins of every member of the Kung Fu Council. Who were Thundering Rhino, Master Storming Ox, and the ferocious Master Croc before they came together to be the stewards of Gongmen City. Now the origin of Master Rhino actually began with the reign of Master Flying Rhino. You see, Master Flying Rhino came from a long line of Kung Fu Masters, but he did establish himself as a legendary warrior on his own, which is clearly seen through his armor being memorialized in the Jade Palace. Master Flying Rhino's armor with authentic battle damage! For the most part, he was believed to be unstoppable, and it was said that the only time his armor was marked was when an army of stealthy lizard assassins attacked him in a bloody battle. Throughout his life, he became a well-respected master, even leading him to befriend Master Uwe himself. Over the years, Flying Rhino trained many warriors, including Commander Va Shir, the leader of the Anvil of Heaven. Master Flying Rhino was even said to have personally recommended Va Shir to Master Uwe to oversee the imprisonment of Tai Lung in Chorgam prison, claiming he was the only one brave enough, strong enough, and ruthless enough for the job. But Flying Rhino's most accomplished student was in fact his own son. While Flying Rhino taught within the Kung Fu school in Gangmen City, his child would train underneath him and would eventually become the most revered master of the Kung Fu Council, Thundering Rhino. Now throughout Thundering Rhino's childhood, he became disciplined and ferocious. He was powerful and much like his father, he was an unstoppable force, but he became desperate for the approval of his father. Early into Rhino's training, Master Storming Ox as a boy would skip his chores so that he could sneak into Gongman City's palace and watch Rhino spar. Intrigued by the young and enthusiastic Ox, Rhino would introduce him to Kung Fu, at least according to early backstories that were developed and released prior to Kung Fu Panda 2. Apparently, Thundering Rhino would eventually leave the boy behind though, as in his early adult life, he became desperate to create his own identity. While he was deeply connected to the Kung Fu world because of his family's history and esteemed status, Thundering Rhino left left the metropolis he grew up within, which led him to picking fights and battling for money in hopes of finding some kind of meaning, which led him to hunt down many criminals across China, including Master Croc. Again, according to those early backstories before Kung Fu Panda 2, we learned that Croc was once the head of a gang of criminals infamously known as the wool-stealing crocodile bandits. When Croc fought Thundering Rhino on the shores of the Wasu Li River, Rhino's superior Kung Fu won out over the crocodile's formidable hide and strength during their epic battle. And the fight became so intense that Master Croc even came to believe that he would soon be killed. But Rhino spared his life, which moved Croc so much that he quit his criminal life forever. Years later, Rhino reunited with both Ox and Croc in a fighting ring in the city of Jin Zhao. This was the first time the future Kung Fu Council was brought together, and immediately Master Uwe recognized their potential and came to believe that their destinies were intertwined. All they needed was a cause worthy enough to fight. That very night, the heinous Wu sisters escaped from prison and began working on forming a criminal syndicate that would span all of China. Ugwe quickly informed the three warriors of the impending danger, but they were unconvinced at first that they should put themselves in danger for the innocent as they were all pursuing their own selfish goals. It was only when Ugwe promised that they would receive a wealth of riches by completing this journey that they set forth towards the Wu sisters' fortress inside the Hubei volcano. Master Thundering Rhino believed that this was his chance to prove he was a worthy master to his father. On that path, all three masters of the Kung Fu Council almost became lost to the treacherous volcano they were ascending until Ugwe saved them and appeared to sacrifice his own life for their well-being. At first, it seemed like they would give up on their fight without their wise guide and the danger continuing to rise, but when they found a destroyed village, they were moved by the harmless bunnies who needed their help. Together, Rhino, Ox, and Croc ascended the rest of the mountain, not for their own benefit, but because it was right. Thundering Rhino wasn't concerned about his reputation, he just wanted to help. They banded together to fight off the Wu sisters and walked away victorious. Humbled by the experience, they saw how their mastery over Kung Fu could be utilized to benefit the world, which set them all down the path to become heroes. While the three warriors saw their potential as a team, they would not unify permanently just yet as they continued on their own individual paths until they were called together again. In the coming years, Master Thundering Rhino continued to travel across China protecting the defenseless while he refined his skills and used the advantages he possessed as a rhino to develop advanced techniques. Most notably, it was Rhino's horn defense the Tigress would someday claim was impervious to any technique. And while he did try a variety of weapons, 
the Staff Master Rhino used to liberate the village of Wen Shen. He eventually developed his form around the mighty Cloud Hammer, which was unbeatable against a huge number of attackers. But Thundering Rhino truly established his legendary status as a warrior when he slayed the 10,000 serpents of the Valley of Woe. You see, the tale goes that a community of wayward settlers stumbled upon a patch of lush, fertile land in the Valley of Woe. But when the serpents who lived underneath them awoke and attempted to remove the villagers from their land, Master Rhino stepped in on his travels to defend the poor refugees. Rhino commanded the serpents to share their land, but when the 10,000 serpents attacked him, he lured them in to break their ranks. He took on an unprecedented number of warriors and successfully sent the heinous reptiles away. Now, after receiving all of these legendary accolades, eventually Thundering Rhino did return to Gongmen City, which may have been prompted by the death of his father. Without a master leading the Kung Fu school in Gongmen City, perhaps Master Thundering Rhino felt it was his responsibility to continue the work his family had begun. That would have put him in position to become close with the peacock rulers of Gangmen City, which was important as they would soon go through the most painful experience in their entire lives. You see, their only child, Lord Shen, committed a brutal slaughter of the pandas in the nearby village when he learned that a warrior of black and white would be his undoing. Horrified by their son's atrocities, the peacocks banished Shen and prepared for his return, but they passed away before he came home. Without an heir to the throne and with the belief the burden to protect Gongwen City fell on his shoulders, Master Thundering Rhino recruited his friends Master Storming Ox and Master Croc to come together again to finally form the Kung Fu Council. He took them both as his pupils and they established themselves as the peaceful protectors of the city. In the years that followed, Storming Ox became Master Rhino's greatest pupil. He showed the warrior how to utilize his horns as deadly weapons, just like how he had perfected the use of his own horn in battle. Across Gongmen City in China, Thundering Rhino's good deeds and heroic fights continued to become more and more well known, and his duties as a master of one of the 29 Kung Fu schools was executed with great care. Like, he was a beloved part of every winter feast. While of course, through all of his experiences and knowledge he became a source of much wisdom, he was also well known to have a humorous side and was simply a good friend. But unfortunately, when Lord Shen returned to Gongmen City, his kung fu would be unable to protect the weak and himself. Gongmen is under the stewardship of the Master's Council and we will protect it even from you. Unprepared for the weapon Shen had built to use against him, Thundering Rhino believed the Cloud Hammer could stop his enemy from taking the city just as it had for years before. But when the cannon finally fired, his life was taken, and all that remained was his hammer and his friends. But who would rise to take Master Thundering Rhino's place as the leader of the Kung Fu Council? Well, that would be his greatest student, Master Storming Ox. Now, Master Ox grew up within Gongmen City. He was raised under the watchful eye of his father who provided him structure and guidance, but he longed for more and was fascinated by Kung Fu. According to Storming Ox's bio on the original Kung Fu Panda website, as a child, Ox would often skip his chores and sneak into the Peacock's palace to watch a young Thundering Rhino spar with his father, Master Flying Rhino. Eventually, Thundering Rhino noticed Ox and his enthusiasm for the art of Kung Fu, so he began to train. Him. Now, while Ox understood Kung Fu was the most respected art form in China, he didn't necessarily internalize that early in his life. While he was training with Master Rhino, he struggled to see that what he was learning would be able to benefit every citizen within Gongmen City, but he couldn't see beyond himself, and part of the reason for that lack of clarity was because his teacher was wrestling with his own demons. Thundering Rhino felt trapped under the shadow of his highly respected and beloved father while he was living in Gongmen City, so he inevitably left his home to explore China and discover his destiny. But that meant Ox was left without a master. Most likely inspired by Rhino's decision to leave the city, Ox eventually went into the world as well. To survive, he quickly learned he could earn extra cash by using his kung fu skills as a street fighter, and he was great at it. Ox's strength, determination, and natural tactical brilliance made him a force to be reckoned with. My uniqueness is to analyze your weakness. And with the realization that he could survive by dominating opponents across China, he saw his potential. But Ox didn't see himself as a noble warrior. He was swept up by the belief that Kung Fu could be his path to riches and wealth. And the fortune. Don't forget about the fortune. 
Then I can quit wasting my time on street fighting and spend it counting my money. The purity of Kung Fu was not Ox's concern. Without guidance from a wise teacher, Ox was following his impulsive desires and just didn't question his path until the day he ended up in a fighting ring in the city of Jin Zhao. On that day, Ox met a former crocodile bandit named Croc and reunited with Thundering Rhino. This was the first time the future Kung Fu Council was brought together. And immediately, Master Ugwe recognized their potential and came to believe that their destinies were intertwined. All they needed was a cause worthy enough to fight, and that very night, one emerged. The heinous Wu sisters escaped from prison and began working on forming a criminal syndicate that would span all of China. Ugwe quickly informed the three warriors of the impending danger, but they were unconvinced at first that they should put themselves in danger for the innocent as they were all pursuing their own selfish goals. It was only when Ugwe promised that they would receive a wealth of riches by completing this journey that they headed towards the Wu sisters' fortress inside the Hubei volcano. Ox believed this was his chance to ascend out of his life of fighting for coins on the street. He was convinced that he would finally earn the wealth that he had been seeking, but this adventure would be so much more than that for him. Ugwe saw that Ox could find a meaningful purpose if he chose a new direction for his life. When the path you walk always leads back to yourself, you never get anywhere. By the way, if you enjoy the videos I create, please consider supporting the channel and going deeper with the community over on Patreon, which is linked down below. Over there, you can get exclusive weekly live streams with me, early access to new videos, and the ability to chat in our community's private Discord server. Now, on the treacherous path to the Wu sisters, the masters of the Kung Fu Council were almost lost to the volcano they were ascending until Ugwe saved them and appeared to sacrifice his own life for them. But instead of immediately rising to meet the tribe, that were laid before them, Ox buckled under the pressure and suggested that without their guide, they weren't capable of completing their mission. It will never be more than a bunch of lousy street fighters. But when the trio found a destroyed village, they were moved by the harmless bunnies who needed their help. While Ox was hoping to collect riches, this moment showed him that there could be a different path for his life that would lead him to find true fulfillment. And through Rhino's leadership, Ox saw that he could change course. So the trio decided to ascend the rest of the mountain. Not for their own benefit, but because it was right. And when they banded together to fight off the Wu sisters, they walked away victorious. Humbled by the experience, all three warriors saw how their mastery over Kung Fu could be utilized to benefit the world, which set them all down the path to become heroes. Now, while Ox, Rhino, and Croc saw their potential as a team and were bonded in their friendship for life, they would not unify permanently just yet. They continued on their own individual paths until they were called together again. Ox specifically saw how committing himself to the service of others was a truly worthy experience, so he answered the call from those in need across China. And over that time, Storming Ox established himself as a highly skilled and brave master. He fought off the Macau Marauders with a simple sword, took on the 72 bandits of the Wing Chou province with nothing but his bear horns, and defeated 200 rat bandits at once. But Ox didn't just continue to fight everywhere he went. When the rice fields in the Wing Chou province flooded, he worked the fields for free in hopes of saving as much of the crops as he could for the villagers. While Master Ox was a tough, massive brute, he was also able to connect to a lighter side of himself that was willing to joke around and have fun. Ox had grown beyond his desires to pursue financial success and was instead pursuing the riches that came from being in service to those in need, which prepared him for his time on the Kung Fu Council. You see, after Lord Shen was banished from Gongmen City by his parents, the peacock rulers of the city, there was no heir to take the throne after Shen's parents passed away. To preserve order across Gongmen City, Master Thundering Rhino recruited his friends Master Croc and Master Storming Ox to come together again to finally form the Kung Fu Council. He took them both as his pupils and they established themselves as the peaceful stewards and protectors of the city. Storming Ox was finally being trained by Master Thundering Rhino again and this was when Ox was able to develop his kung fu skills to new heights. You see, Rhino's horn defense would develop into an impervious technique against other warriors, and Rhino shared that knowledge with Ox so that he could use his horns 
in combat. Instead of using his horns for defense though, he transformed them into his most deadly weapon. Master Ox would train using axes and swords too, but his horns would eventually allow him to take on dozens of attackers at once. He was still quick to action and he challenged Rhino as a master, but Ox was a loyal friend, a trusted member of the council, and was Master Thundering Rhino's greatest student. But when Lord Shen returned to Gongmen City, Master Ox and the rest of the Kung Fu Council were unable to stop the weapon Shen would unleash upon them. When Shen's cannon fired against Master Thundering Rhino, his life was taken, and all that remained of him was his hammer and his friends. Ox and Croc were shaken by the death of their friend, and they were fearful now. They were on their own, and they once again felt like they had no hope. Ox believed that their main focus should be on minimizing the death and destruction that Shen would unleash upon their home. He thought they had to stand down. I mean, you do want to take back your city, right? Of course we do. But if we stand up to Shin, he will turn the weapon on the city. Everything Storming Ox had come to believe about himself, the Kung Fu Council, and the art of Kung Fu seemed to be over. Kung Fu is dead. But with the encouragement of Shifu, Master Ox eventually helped the Dragon Warrior avenge Thundering Rhino by defeating Lord Shen. And as Thundering Rhino's most respected student, Storming Ox most likely became the master of Gongmen City and their Kung Fu school. And he proved, with the rise of Kai, that he would fearlessly protect his home to the bitter end. Master Lizard, Master Ox, all of them, in every village from the sea to here, every master in China has vanished. But what about the ferocious Master Croc? Well, what's interesting about him is that unlike many other legends of Kung Fu, he began his life as a criminal, and a high-ranking one at that. You see, Master Croc was born in a swamp to a mother he grew to love dearly, but as he got older, he inevitably joined one of many crocodile gangs across China and became a bandit. And the reality is that the path to become bandits seems to be very common for crocodiles. There's a lot of ambition within crocodile families to achieve power, dominance, and wealth. And we've seen crocs be extremely competitive and self-conscious in series like The Legends of Awesomeness. For many young crocodiles, crime seems to be the easiest road to achieve everything they think they want. Sure, there were some truly evil and ruthless bandits, but others felt forced into a life of crime. I had to become a bandit. It's the only thing I'm good at. We don't know exactly how Master Croc felt as he was beginning his career as a bandit, but we've seen that there are Crocs who felt guilt for the crimes they were committing and questioned their path in life. Within the Valley of Peace, the Croc bandits weren't the smartest criminals, they weren't very respected, and they never had much success. Back to the hideout. You mean your mom's basement? But through them, we saw that when they were given the opportunity to be heroes, they preferred it. How do you like being a hero, Fung? I like it a lot, Gary. I like it a lot. The Valley of Peace's bandits eventually even disbanded and willingly went to prison to serve their time so that they could all start a new life. Maybe Master Croc never questioned what he was doing as a bandit, but the fact that he eventually turned away from crime like other crocodiles leads me to believe that at some point he may have considered what he could become if he turned away from crime. I think there could have been some conflict deep within Master Croc that he wasn't able to recognize within himself because throughout his early life, being a bandit wasn't just the simplest choice. It also seemed like the best choice because the truth was that Master Croc was a fantastic criminal and warrior. You see, with proper guidance and training, crocodiles have been shown to become extremely powerful warriors. And in his youth, Master Croc was committed to becoming as strong as an ox and as wily as a fox. With his incredibly durable hide and his legendary lashing tail of terror technique, he was unstoppable. You can't hide from my impenetrable hide. Throughout the entirety of Master Croc's time as a bandit, he was unbeaten in a fight and that built a legend around him. There were tales that Master Croc was so cold-blooded that he once made a sharp cry. He was said to be able to strike at an opponent before they could even react, and some even believed that when he bit an enemy, their ancestors felt it. And once Master Croc was able to attract attention for all of his success, he caught the eye of some of the most villainous Croc bandits in all of China. 
You see, when dangerous crocodiles united under competent leadership, the gangs they formed were able to rise to be some of the most ruthless in the world. The most infamous gang run by crocodiles is remembered as being unmatched in their mischief and was famous for their traps, and they were known as the wool-stealing crocodile bandits. And yes, that was the gang Master Croc joined. On the island of Crocodile Bandits and across China's criminal underworld, Master Croc was a dominant and respected force even before he formally studied Kung Fu by true Kung Fu masters. And after years of dedication to his gang and rising amongst the ranks, he even became the head of the wool stealing Crocodile Bandits. Now what's even more wild about Master Croc leading that gang is that in Secrets of the Furious Five, we learned that early in Master Mantis's life, he was sent on a mission to fight the those crocs to retrieve wool for some innocent sheep. He was trapped for weeks by the very bandits that Master Croc had once led. But that's the big question. How did Master Croc escape his life of crime? Well, he left it all behind once he was finally defeated in battle by someone who would become a good friend. You see, Master Croc was hunted down by Master Thundering Rhino when he left the metropolis of Gongmen City in his youth. Rhino seemed to have been on a quest to take down criminals across China, which meant he was after the head of the wool-stealing crocodile bandits. Inevitably, Croc faced Thundering Rhino on the shores of the Wasuli River, and their battle was said to have been epic. But in the end, Thundering Rhino's superior Kung Fu won out over Master Croc's formidable hide and strength. The loss was painful for Master Croc to accept, and in that moment, he was convinced that he was going to be killed. But Thundering Rhino spared his life. Rhino only asked that Croc use his Kung Fu excellence for good, which moved Master Croc to quit his criminal life forever. On that day, the two warriors went their separate ways, but they would soon reunite again. Sure, Master Croc gave up terrorizing the weak and robbing villages, but that didn't mean he had inner peace or an understanding of how to use his skills for the greater good. Instead, he was more focused on creating a new legacy for himself that could cloud his time as a Croc bandit. Instead of fighting for honor, Master Croc decided to seek out fame and glory. With Kung Fu as one of Master Croc's only skills though, he decided to roam China and earn enough to survive by fighting for crowds on the street. That path continued for years until his life changed when he found himself in a fighting ring in the city of Jin Zhao. That day, he reunited with Thundering Rhino and met Storming Ox, which is significant because it marks the first time the future Kung Fu Council was brought together. Immediately, Master Ugwe recognized their potential and came to believe that their destinies were intertwined. All they needed was a cause worthy enough to fight, and that very night, one emerged. The heinous Wu sisters escaped from prison and began working on forming a criminal syndicate that would span all of China. Ugwe quickly informed the three warriors of the impending danger, but they were unconvinced at first that they should put themselves in danger for the innocent as they were all pursuing their own selfish goals. It was only when Ugwe promised that they would receive a wealth of riches by completing this journey that they headed towards the Wu sisters' fortress inside the Hubei volcano. Master Croc believed that this was his chance to earn the adoration and love of the world, but it would become so much more for him. On the treacherous path to the Wu sisters, the masters of the Kung Fu Council were almost lost to the volcano they were ascending, until Ugwe saved them and appeared to sacrifice his own life for them. At first, it seemed like they were willing to abandon the path to the Wu sisters without their wise guide, and Master Croc even felt they had no chance of being victorious. We couldn't beat each other up, let alone the Wu sisters. But when they found a destroyed village, they were moved by the harmless bunnies who needed their help. Together, Rhino, Ox, and Croc ascended the rest of the mountain, not for their own benefit, but because it was right. Croc wasn't concerned about his past or fame or his legacy, he just wanted to help. So he banded with the other warriors to fight off the Wu sisters, and together they walked away victorious. Master Croc, the crocodile who would once led one of the most formidable gangs of croc bandits in all of China, had just taken down a criminal syndicate. He was beginning to redeem himself. Now, while Rhino, Ox, and Croc saw their potential as a team and were bonded in their friendship for life, 
they would not unify permanently just yet. They continued on their own individual paths until they were called together again. Croc silenced the badger bandits who talked about his mom. He protected the island of Chen Wei against a band of 173 roaming assassins, and he became known as an awe-inspiring aquatic arsenal of excellence. Croc's heroics were allowing his reputation to change. People were seeing that he was becoming a hero. In the cape Master Croc used for... Well, I don't know what he used it for, but let me tell you something. Made him look really cool. But soon he would be called to take on the burden of leadership once more. You see, after Lord Shen was banished from Gongmen City by his parents, the peacock rulers of the city, there was no heir to take the throne after Shen's parents passed away. To preserve order across Gongmen City, Master Thundering Rhino recruited his friends, Master Croc and Master Storming Ox, to come together again to finally form the Kung Fu Council. He took them both as his pupils and they established themselves as the peaceful stewards and protectors of the city. For years, the three masters worked together as friends to create peace, and over that time, Master Croc established himself as a revered and respected master. But unfortunately, when Lord Shen returned to Gangmen City, their kung fu would be unable to stop the weapon Shen would unleash upon them. When Shen's cannon fired against Master Thundering Rhino, his life was taken, and all that remained of him was his hammer and his friends. The rest of the Kung Fu Council was shaken by the death of their leader. For Master Croc, Thundering Rhino was the person who had originally sent him down the noble path. Along Croc's journey of redemption, Rhino had been a guide and a teacher for him. But now Croc and Ox were on their own without hope. But with the encouragement of Shifu, Master Croc eventually helped the Dragon Warrior avenge Thundering Rhino by defeating Lord Shen. Years later, when General Kai attacked Gongmen City, Master Croc fearlessly went after him because he was unwilling to let fear stop him again from doing what was right. The legacy that Master Thundering Rhino established inspired Ox, Croc, and citizens across Gongmen City in China to fight for the greater good. And that's why he was immortalized as a statue in the Master Garden at the Jade Palace after his death. He was a hero for all. But one of the most legendary and defining moments of his life came about when he called upon the once misguided Master Ox and the reformed Master Croc to help him keep Gongmen City safe. On that day, those three masters made history when they created the Kung Fu Council. Fun people, I'm Isaac Carlson. Thank you for watching, and of course, have a magical day.